Hello there. How are you today? You are doing fine. I'm sure you are, because we're about to have some fun with the Cursible from Sacrament. The Cursible is a 14 HP Euro Rack module. It is a 6 channel morphing send and return matrix. It's a possessed multifunction switch selector, and today we will study most of its properties and features, with some audio presentations and patch ideas as offerings. For those unfamiliar with Eurorack, it may seem a bit scary, with all those jacks and buttons, but we'll do a quick overview of the front panel, and we'll investigate all the possibilities. The main audio or signal input, this jack can consume any type of signals, and it is always connected to the send outputs. You can use those outputs to send the signal to any desired destination. The common way to use it would be to send the signal to some effect processing modules, and send back the processed signal to the cursible. The return inputs are used for this, but there's a few secret tricks with the return inputs and I will reveal them to you in this video, but don't tell anyone, because it's a secret. By now on, we should relate the sends and the returns as channels. Those channels are mysteriously identified by numerical mysteries and equipped with a button for each one. The sum output, the selected channels will go through this output, along with the unprocessed signal. When the bypass button is activated, this function send the main signal right through the sum output, while muting the return inputs. For external control, the CV and clock inputs. The CV and clock input operates differently, depending of the activated mode, and we will explore the differences shortly. The shift button. This button is a key element for setting the modes and features of the cursible. The shift button is also the visual indicator of the activated mode. The modes are represented by the a certain amount of blinks, from no blink at all, up to six. The knobs, to attenuate the incoming CV and main signal, and finally, the encoder. Probably the most satisfying encoder you'll ever encounter in the modular world. This thing will be used for setting some features and for performing some channel manipulation. So now, we've just finished studying the front panel. But before exploring each mode with some audio demonstrations, let's move forward and play with the settings and features. So let's start by feeding the cursible with some audio signal. I'm using the subway from KV Synth through the Bionic Lester. The signal from the main input will go through each send outputs. The signals from the return inputs and the main signal when the bypass is activated will go through the sum output. The next key functions are very useful, so listen carefully. Holding down the shift button for two seconds will give you access to a sub-menu represented by the six channel buttons. Still while holding the shift button, turning the encoder will let you select the desired amount of morph between channels. Holding the shift button while pushing the encoder will switch between the individual or fill setting. When you see the LEDs going in circle, you know you've done the combination correctly. Holding the shift button while pushing the first button will let you select which channels you're planning to use. Simply push the button for each desired channel. Switching between settings and modes can be executed very quickly. This makes the Cursible an amazing tool for live performances. Okay, let's try a simple patch to demonstrate the cool aspects of the piano mode. Let's start by a simple kick drum. Holding down the encoder until the shift button stops blinking will indicate that you're in the piano mode. In piano mode, 
the channel buttons, will act as momentary switches that turn the channels on while pressing and holding the buttons. Let's try different morph settings. Remember, hold the shift button and select the desired morph amount. Adding more morph amount will decrease the attack and release, just like an envelope to your VCA. Each channels are processing the audio through different modules. Rainmaker, ZDSP, Clouds, Topographic Delay, Time Safari, and the Data Bender. Cleverly thought, when you switch to that mode, any CV and clock signal will become muted, so no effect at all. You will need to perform and improvise. The latching mode. To access this mode, simply hold the shift button while pressing the first button. This mode can be very similar to the piano mode, except that the channels will stay activated until their assignated buttons are pressed again. I'll take this opportunity to show you that the Cursible can be a great mixing tool. I'm sending different tracks to the return inputs. The sum output will provide the mix of all channels. The amount of morph will adjust the attack of each tracks when selected. It is very important to remember that the selected channels in this mode will stay activated in the other modes of the Cursible. The Cursible can be used as a mixing instrument, and you can mix any type of signals. So let's try something different in this next demonstration. Let's try this next mode with a simple sequence with the Hearthstone at Mark III. By holding the shift button and the second channel button, we will activate the manual sequencing mode. Let's not forget to activate each channels in the latching mode first. When a channel is activated, it is indicated in the other modes by a soft blink on each buttons. In manual sequencing mode, by turning the encoder, you will crossfade manually between each channels. In this demonstration, we are sending different signals from the Kermits to the FM input of the Hearthstone nut. The morph settings will adjust the timing of the crossfade effect. If any channels are muted, they will simply be skipped through. Playing with the number of channels, and the morph amount, and the bypass button. Let's 
switched to fill mode, the fill setting will stack each channels together. In this case it will become a mess of frequency modulation. But, you'll get the point. I'm sure of it. Until now, we saw lots of options for performing manually with the Cursible. But let's try some CV controls in this next demonstration. The Cursible is mainly identified as a morphing effect module. I'm trying to demonstrate that it can do a lot more. So in this next mode, we will use the Cursible to distribute some triggers for some rhythmic patterns. Holding the shift button, and then pressing the third button, will activate the CV sequencing mode. This time the channels will be selected with CV control. In a matter of fact, the encoder here is entirely disabled. I tried to build a simple patch, so the triggers sent by the Cursible will be obvious to understand. The Polyvoc VCA will give us a small percussive noise. A signal at the CV input of the Cursible will select the channel, send different clocks and triggers for polyrhythms, or to add some rhythmic diversity. A nice trick here is to switch to film mode, so each trigger selected will be added to the rhythmic sequence. FD CV level knob is also a nice tool for limiting the channels you intend to use. Sending LFOs, sequences, random voltages, any type of signal will do. All channels can be muted by pushing the bypass button. I'm sure you're starting to understand how practical this module can be, but the next modes are cleverly designed, so let's not waste any minutes. The Cursible is a Euro Rack module, but nothing forces you to limit yourself to the modular format. Let's try this next mode with my beloved Electron Digitact, and we will use the send and return channels of the Cursible to process the sound of the Digitact. Let's hear the unprocessed sound with the bypass button activated. And switch back to individual mode. Let's be sure that the morph setting is at the very low. Pushing the fourth button while holding the shift button will activate the random manual mode. This mode will please anybody that glorifies randomness and happy accidents as the encoder will randomly select any of the activated channels. Audacious and unpredictable, this mode is great for improvisation and chaotic patching. CV and clock inputs are disabled in this mode. Morph and individual settings works the same. Stacking 
multiple signals, while in fill mode, is a very nice way of intensifying the climax of your patches. in mind that if the morph setting is at its highest level, turning the encoder too fast will prevent the signal from reaching its maximum level of amplitude. instrument you might be playing. Keyboard, flute, tape cassette, or electric guitar. This module has unique and inspiring functions that will enhance your creativity. The clock drive mode. This mode lets you sequence the selected channels with the incoming signal at the clock input. Note that this mode got a sub-menu, which lets you select the direction of the sequencing. Holding down the shift button, and then holding down the fifth button. This will give you access to this sub-menu. Now turning the encoder will select the desired direction. 1. Forward. 2. Backward. 3. Pendulum and 4. Random. In this demonstration, I'm using the Cursible to select the waveform of an oscillator. This Dixie is equipped with six outputs already, and will do just fine. Some of its outputs are slightly modified by a wave filter, a slew generator and a filter. Each time a signal is received at the clock input, the cursible will move one step in the assignated direction, and I'm using a light jack for identifying easily the signal. The oscilloscope might pollute your vision, but this scope is very helpful to visualize the waveforms morphing between each others. Adjusting the morph settings a bit. Switching to random direction, and to film mode, the film mode will combine the outputs together. Let's use a simple sequence at the 1 volt per octave input of the Dixie oscillator.
The morph and fill settings, and the frequency of the incoming clock, can give you interesting results. Don't be afraid to experiment with every parameter available in your patch. This next and last mode is very similar to the CV sequencing mode, but the CV and clock inputs works like a sample and hold. So each time a clock is received, a new voltage will be held. The CV and clock sequencing mode can be activated by pushing the sixth button while holding the shift button. I'll be using some signals from the Dixie's oscillator in the CV and clock inputs. In this batch, the ensemble oscillator's outputs are going through the FXDF, and each band goes to the return inputs of the cursible. At audio rate, the clock will almost express some granular textures. Try changing both frequencies of the incoming CV signals. Having a sample and hold integrated with the cursible is a clever feature. Each mode behaves a bit differently with the CV and clock inputs. So, switching between modes while performing is easy and inspiring. There's so many options when you start thinking outside of the box with this module. Having a second cursible would not even be overkilling. Speaking of which, let's try a simple dual cursible patch and practice with what we've learned so far.
studied all the features of this incredible module. For more information, you can visit the web page of Sacrament Modular. The Cursible is a unique morphing switch selector with lots of modes and functions. The build quality is impressive. Just look at the amazing aesthetics of the original box, front panel and manual. It is clearly obvious that this module was created with passion. I hope this tutorial was inspiring and instructionalizing. Please share your tips in the comments. If you are using the Cursible, in some ways, unexplained in this video. So, time to say goodbye, and wish you some nice experimental patching.